Hi, hello, I am back with another breakfast video. This is five really simple, low effort meal prep ideas, sweet and savory ones. If you end up recreating any of these, feel free to take a photo, put it on your Instagram and potentially tag me as well. Also, this video is brought to you by Squarespace. I've seen this trend of blended chia pudding making the rounds on the internet. So I wanted to add my own version to it. It tastes super rich, but it is definitely quite nutritious at the same time. So good. There really is only one step, and that is to blend all ingredients up in a small blender or food processor the night before. We got some chia seeds, smooth peanut butter, some soft dates, also add a pinch of salt, some vanilla, some unsweetened cacao, optionally some chocolate or vanilla protein powder, and some non-dairy milk. Depending on your preferred consistency, this might take up to a few minutes. And then place the two puddings into the fridge overnight. The next morning, I decided to top these with some strawberries, walnuts, and dark chocolate chips. This was so lovely and a really nice change up to overnight oats. If you've got some ideas for other flavors I could try here, let me know in the comments. I am absolutely in love with this next recipe. It's my simplified overnight version of bakrir, which are Arabic pancakes. They're super easy to make. Let's, let's make them. The night before, grab a small blender and add the hot water, the cold water, some agave syrup, and a sprinkle of dry active yeast. Allow this to sit for like a minute or two. In the meantime, you can gather all the dry ingredients. Those would be plain flour, baking powder, and salt. I really do have a talent for spilling things. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my thing. All right, now blend this for a good minute and then place the dough into the fridge overnight. And now the next morning, you're going to give this mixture a good stir first to ensure that everything is nice and incorporated. Meanwhile, bring a nonstick skillet with a bit of olive oil to medium heat. And now once it's hot, you're going to let these pancakes cook for about two to three minutes, depending on the size. You don't have to flip them. You can make them small or really big or you can go for more abstract shapes and sizes. Now, I was kind of scared at first about the yeast potentially dying on me in the fridge, but it thankfully didn't. Whatever happened gave the dough a really nice fermented flavor that reminds me of sourdough. You can technically serve these sweet as well if you'd like, but like I said, I do like these better savory. Here I went with hummus, tomato, basil. This was so good. You can also batch make these, for example, doubling this recipe and then placing the pancakes into the freezer. And then whenever you're feeling like having pancakes, you can just toast these up and serve them with whatever you like. This next recipe is based on a TikTok that I saw the other day. So this is kind of my version of oat butter. Honestly, one of the yummiest things I've made in a while. It reminds me so much of something I ate as a kid, but I can't quite pinpoint what that is. Anyway, preheat the oven to 180 degrees Celsius. Grab a baking sheet, add some cashews and some oats. Allow this to roast for about eight minutes or until lightly golden brown. In the meantime, you can set up a blender and also grab a small saucepan to which you're gonna add some vegan butter. Now, as with all these recipes, we're gonna blend things up. So we're blending the roasted oats and nuts, some agave or maple syrup, a pinch of salt, a bit of cinnamon, some vanilla, the melted butter, although you could also do coconut oil. I will also add some water to help everything blend. keep this in the fridge for up to a week, you can put this on top of pancakes. You could add this to a yogurt granola bowl. If you're just feeling like a snack, you can just have this with some apple slices or have it on some toast. 
Next, we have this really simple sandwich that I've been making all the time lately. First, prep the eggplant or aubergine. This can be done the night before, or if you got some time, then just make this right before wanting to eat the sandwich. So at first, I cut up one to two aubergines into larger chunks. Then I added some olive oil to this, salt, pepper, and harissa in its powder form. Um, you can sub this with any other preferred chili powder. Chipotle would be really nice. Put this into the oven and let it bake for 25 to 30 minutes. I let everything cool and then place this into a Tupperware container to keep in the fridge overnight. Now on to making the sandwich. I accidentally bought gluten-free bread. It actually does not taste gluten-free to me. It's really good. While this was baking, I put together my new favorite sandwich sauce. Vegan mayonnaise, tahini, and a bit of white wine vinegar. That is pretty much it, so the sandwich goes as follows. Bread, tahini mayo, the roasted spicy aubergine, some fresh basil, and some lettuce. When I tell you that this has been my favorite thing to eat lately, yeah, highly, highly recommend. Another one of my recent food obsessions has been this particular spinach. It is so simple, yet so different to the way that I would normally cook spinach. I got inspired by different Korean and Chinese spinach recipes. This can be an overnight recipe, but it also doesn't have to be. Again, in a small blender, which by the way, I will link down below in case you're wondering what model this is. But yeah, to this blender, I'm adding one small to medium white onion, two cloves of garlic, some soy sauce, some sesame oil, some vinegar, I would recommend rice or white wine vinegar. Also add some gochujang or another spicy component of your choosing and some water, plus a little bit of agave or sugar. In the background, I already have the skillet preheating to medium. And yeah, so as soon as that's hot, I'm adding the sauce. And then I'm letting this cook for about three minutes, perhaps adding a splash of water here and there as needed. And then the spinach goes in there, giving everything about three to four minutes to wilt down. Taste test, see if it needs some more salt or soy sauce maybe. Now you can either serve this right away, perhaps with some leftover or freshly cooked rice. That is my personal favorite way of eating this. Just with some added sesame seeds, some chili crisp sauce. I also had a bit of hummus with this. But you could also store the spinach in the fridge overnight and then add that to sandwiches or wraps or as a topping for savory oatmeal. Yeah, so to my sandwich, I added some hummus, tomato, some smoked tofu. It was really good. And then I also made a little matcha to have on the go. This is very random, but I'm going to Vienna next week. And I need some like recommendations. If anybody has some good vegan recommendations or, or just coffee recommendations in general, I'm curious and very interested. My goal is to consume as much coffee as possible while I'm there, so any coffee shop cafe recommendation is highly appreciated. Last but not least, I've got some cute cafe b-roll that I wanted to share whilst I talk about today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform designed to help you build and grow your online brand and business. Start by creating a new website, simply choose one of their many beautifully designed website templates, or start from scratch with a blank slate page, if that's what you prefer. Also use Squarespace to create a fitting new logo and put together a matching newsletter to get your message and products out there and to keep your followers and clients up to date. If you need any extra help, don't hesitate to ask their 24-7 award-winning customer service. Get started today! Simply go to squarespace.com slash and use the offer code MINAROM to get 10% off your first purchase of a new site or domain. Got me 
feeling like I'm falling down, but I won't hit the ground. Got me feeling.